I first came to Uganda five years ago. My original plan was to take a year off of school before I went on to law school. And uh, I saw a lot of suffering around me and a lot of uh, poverty. And so I just found myself slowly getting involved in one small thing after another and uh, decided to stay. About three years ago, John Reardon and I were working together in Kampala. And one of the things we were really struck by is the number of young men who were unemployed, uh, who were about 16 and didn't have the money to continue on in school. And they were just uh, sort of without direction. And uh, so we met a couple of them and uh, questioned them about what they would like to be involved in. And they said they would like a soccer team. So we began a soccer team with those few boys and told them to bring their friends and we would practice every day at such and such a time at a certain field and that went on for a while and soon the boys came and said they had their coach who they wanted us to meet. In Uganda you get to be sort of leery of these sort of situations and uh, so this man basically told us he, he would like to coach this team and we shouldn't worry about paying him, he, he'd just like to do it. From that time on, we became friends with Stone and uh, we began working together. Stone began playing football in high school and uh, he was recognized as a really talented soccer player. And uh, when he was about uh, 18, he was picked up by his first professional team. He played at the professional level for 10 years. By that time, he had been chosen to be on the national team, which is uh, the goal of all Ugandan football players because you have the opportunity to uh, go and play in Europe because you're being seen by scouts from the European clubs. Soon before he began his international career, he was on a breakaway for the goal. Before he shot, a guy cut him down from behind the ligaments in his knee. It wasn't an accident, he did it intentionally, and that put an end to his uh, professional career. In a country where revenge is really commonplace, um, where uh, 16 years of war and corruption have been centered around revenge, Stone uh, just said to this man, don't worry about it, you did what you had to do. Stone's ability to forgive this man after pursuing a career for so long uh, was really remarkable. And we knew that the sort of integrity he had within him was exactly what these boys were going to need in order to get direction in their life. Some of these boys were druggists, some were pickpocketers, some were, let me say, wild boys, just walk on the streets aimlessly, without direction at all. We look at these boys to give them a sense of direction. And in this, we also try to give them some skills, then some resources, then a frame of mind, you know, which can really help them in future. We just don't look at them as footballers for their future, but we want them to be good citizens. So we want them to be self-reliant, to have those skills to help them in future. The boys that Stone started with were basically rejected by their family and their community as being, uh, you know, troublemakers and problem children. But Stone really loved the boys and showed a lot of trust in them. We keep these boys just by the love just we give them. Otherwise, we don't give them money, we don't give them things. But they just come because they feel they're at home on the team. It is love that's makes everything. You can never be happy unless you have love. So with that, 
we really work, work on that. That's the base of the team. It's love and forgiveness. When Stone teaches about love and forgiveness, when Stone teaches about love and forgiveness, immediately around them and learn how to forgive them, A lot of uh, the teaching of this principle is just shown by Stone's life. He lives in the same area as the boys. They know his wife, his children, the way he interacts with his family. And they see that he's actually living everything he's teaching. And so that's really the most powerful part of what he does, even more important than what he says. And I think uh, his example really challenges the boys to be like him. Leadership isn't about being famous. So even though Stone may be affecting only a couple hundred people in his community, those couple hundred people will be affecting villages, and those villages will be affecting other villages. We are trying to teach them how to lead themselves, how they can have responsibility. Not that I will be there all the time, because most of these are boys, and they are going to be fathers. Now, what type of families will they lead? If they are left as they are. We try to tell these boys that there's nothing which you cannot do. It is through hard work that all things are possible. Your life is entirely on you. What you have in your mind is what will shape your future, is what will shape you. <laughs>